Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics with a really fun special project that's very practical. I bet we all know someone or maybe many people, many ladies that are expecting babies. And we know as makers, one of our favorite things to do is sew for the little ones. So if that's you and maybe you've got a baby shower coming up or maybe you've just been blessed with a new one in your family or maybe a special family friend that has a baby, this is called Ellie's Pinwheel, the warmest, coziest flannel out there on the market by Bonnie Sullivan. She designs for Maywood Studios. And as mothers, one of our most primal desires is to wrap our babies with warmth and give them love. And what does that more than a flannel quilt made by you would be just amazing. We have kits available of the Ellie's Pinwheels. It'll be these exact fabrics, again, all flannel. And our darling little elephant, in our specific kit will be pre-fused and laser cut for you. We know other companies maybe have this kit, but we did get the permission to go ahead and pre-fuse and laser cut that. So you can skip that step too and just enjoy the fun. The quilt is easier than you think it would be. I'll just break that down and we'll jump right into our tutorial today. So I'll be talking you through how to make this block, a really fun technique of how to make our half square triangles that make our pinwheel. And then we're just sewing some squares and rectangles together to create our block. Then we have our simple square here and some setting triangles around the perimeter of the quilt that I'll touch on as well. So let's just take a look at what's in your kit. Of course, we have a backing option. Just get that at the same time you grab your kit. Limited kits are available of that. And we have a simple three piece thread set for stitching down the elephant. And we did all of our piecing with a dove color here at Ortho. We'll be sure to have that in the link. This is what's loaded into the machine. And we thought that was the perfect color to kind of transition from one color to the next in the kit. So let's look at the kit. This is called Little Lambies, also from Bonnie Sullivan. It's just the sweetest pastel fabric. So in your kit, you're getting a big chunk of the white, which of course will be for your big squares, your setting triangles, and all of your patchwork but all of the colors are coming to you in a pre-cut. You don't have to cut those out, I love that. So the first thing that we'll be doing is when we get our big piece of our white fabric, we're gonna be cutting that per our instructions, our five inch squares, our larger squares here, as well as our setting triangles. I know for me, I love being able to use a ruler to be able to set right on top of my fabric and cut around that with a spinning mat. You're gonna be cutting a lot of the five inch squares and so I've got one of those here that I did cut with my perfect five. And my other five inch is just one that you would be getting out of your charm pack that's included in your kit. Once you have that, you have two options really. You could draw the line from corner to corner as is written in the pattern, placing this right side together and sew a quarter inch on the other side of the line. For me, I tend to vary just a little bit in and out of that quarter inch. So I love to do what's actually a different technique and that's using a creative grid aid. I'm gonna call it an aid. It's not really a ruler, it's a tool where instead of having to find that quarter inch on either side of a line drawn diagonally, I simply sew directly on this line. Far more accurate whenever I get to sew directly on a line than hoping I can track true to a quarter inch away from a line, right? Once we have that drawn, we do the same thing in the opposite direction. So let me just bring that out and show you what that looks like. And we sewed directly on those lines with a shortened stitch length. I've learned that with flannel, it's a, there's a looser weave to it. There's more stretch, there's more things going on. Shorten that stitch length up. Normally on a Bernina, we're sewing on a 2.5. With flannel, we sew on a 2.0. Check that out on your machine and figure out where the right setting is. Once you have that sewn, the next thing we'll do is we need to cut this out very carefully. And Bonnie does a great job of instructing us through these steps in her pattern. So let me unpin that and let's just start cutting. The first cut she recommends is to just go right up through that center. And I can see my ruler here. 
keeping in mind that this is five inches and this is two and a half, it's going to be running really tracking right along that edge and going right up through this point and this point. So we'll give a cut. And then without moving anything, and it gets a little bit crowded here, move some things out of the way. I'll just lift up my ruler. And cut this way. Now that we have this, we'll cut again diagonal to diagonal on all of these. So you can see in very short order with this technique, you get eight half square triangles. Back in the day, I was just getting two <laughs> at a time. So it's a really cool technique. I really uh, agree with Bonnie that this is an efficient way to do that. The next thing she's recommending in her pattern, normally when we're going to have a pinwheel, we normally press to the dark. Because of the bulk of flannel, she's recommending that we press all seams at this point open. So I'll go ahead and get those pressed open as well. I'll just do a couple. This is oversized and now needs to be squared up to two inches. I'm gonna grab for my two and a half and I'm gonna place this right along my seam. Now, anytime we're squaring anything up, we want to be able to square up a little bit on all four sides. So let's just bring this right into on that seam where I just have a little bit peeking out where I get to Square up, and with spinning match, you need a little bit more room. Now that I have those two sides cleaned, trimmed, I'm going to set this right on that line. Trim. And trim and now that's perfect getting ready to go into the greater pinwheel all right let me just move that out of the way that we need a little bit more room here to do what we want to do this is where we're going we want to lay them out how many times have I sewn a pinwheel together wrong I'm embarrassed to tell you how many times <laughs> I don't have enough fingers to show you how many times I've done that where you just do one little turn, that's all it takes, right? They're squares, they can sew together. I've done this. I've, I've made completely separate blocks. So you can see laying them out in advance is a really good thing to do to make sure you have them as you would want. You would place them right side together, making sure you're stacking right on top. Sewing here sewing here. So I've done those ahead of time. All right? And just pressed open again. We'll put that there. And again, have I done this? And that's a very interesting block. It's not the block we're going for, however. <laughs> so let's do this. Place right side together. That point marks exactly where that seam allowance should pass through right there. You know, I'm going to go sew that just because I want to be able to sew today. I've got some uh, aids on my machine. Actually, I've got my diagonal seam tape. I'm going to add this one and I've just learned it's on the far right side. Why am I adding this aid? There's a little ridge here. It keeps me from going chunky on that seam allowance, which is my miss. If I do anything wrong in quilting, it is absolutely that. I don't know why I do it, but I do it. This holds me true to not doing that. See the needle about to pass that place? So 
So let's press this open. Oh, it already wants to do that. All right. Now that we have our pinwheel, this is where we're headed. It's always nice to be able to see that. It's easy peasy, right? If we wanna just mimic what we have, again, lay the block out, lay everything out. Make sure your site picture looks correct to you. Here and here, in the corners. And of course, we know we need to assemble in rows, right? Right side together, so the quarter inch. Let me show you how we did this right here. That's our top row. Same thing we did with our bottom row. Right? Let's talk about this one here. Let's talk about that one. I want to keep track of, there's a lot of seams happening in the back. So let's sew this together from the back side so we can keep track of that. We don't want any surprises with those seams or anything rolling. And you can see when I pull this back, look where the seam wants to go. Why? because there's all of these happening and there's no resistance here. Path of least resistance. This is the reason, when we look at this, this is the reason that we ended up pressing toward the white. Normally we always press to the dark, right? Except when we shouldn't, which is, one of, which is what's happening here. This is what will give us interlocking seams. I'll go sew this one on and let's sew our block together. And then we can talk about setting triangles and how we're working with our setting triangles. Now that we have this, we're placing right side together. Let's press that out more. There we go. So let's lay the block out. And you can see, because we pressed out this way, that's why we had to press inward on that white so that we get our interlocking seams. So let's talk about that. When we have those seams lock in right there, oh, that is just, you know when you're there, especially with flannel because it's so thick. We'll put a pin in here. Pin our other intersection. And in those two corners and sew our quarter inch. Now as we look, you can see again, there's far less seams on this side in our seams wanting to go this direction. So we'll, we'll agree with that, that's a good idea. <laughs> Beautiful. And again, here, right side together, pin, pin, pin the corners, quarter inch seam allowance, and then we'll be pressing, I'm just gonna we'll zero in on that so you can see that, how we press our block. Once you have that, you're just making blocks in various colors, right? You've got your yellow and your peach and all of these. These blocks, as we said, are just plain blocks. And if you wanna have a ruler that's at least that width or greater that we have the eight and a half by 24 and a half inch, great option 
for wide border quilts or cutting big squares like that. So just an idea for you. But the point is that this is a diagonal assembly. You, I pointed that out. But now that you can see this block is this way. We built it this way, but it's assembled this way. This quilt is assembled in diagonal rows, okay? So once this is done, we have a plain block, a peach block, a plain block, but there's something special that happens in the four corners. And specifically, I'll be kind of simulating that upper left corner, which is a purple block. And we'll just pretend that this is a purple block. There's something special that happens and they're called setting triangles. And that's how points, quilts that are made, what's called on point, are set in. This is how it's established. So we have our block. We have one setting triangle. We have another setting triangle. Notice these started off as a square and were cut on the diagonal. Definitely use sizing to stabilize your fabrics. And then our last fabric is in this corner. So as we kind of look at this, do you see how you can kind of, you can see this is the upper left side all the blocks would be coming down and on the right side you would have more setting triangles just this rotated so that's how quilts set on point blocks set on point work how do we sew these together we would definitely be placing this right side together and notice this triangle is poking out don't trim that you want that out there right now it feels like you cut it wrong you didn't if that point is extending, you did it correctly. So I wanted to point that out. I remember that as an early quilter, way before YouTube even was conceived as an idea, I thought I had done it wrong and I kept trimming my, this to, till they match. The problem is they have to be oversized because of how triangles work. So you place this right side together. So a quarter inch, happy to do that. Press toward the triangle and I like to put it back to say all right where where am I now what am I doing next here again this I'm going to rotate that I am going to sew from this side this time it's a little awkward sewing from that side I could do it. In fact, you know what? I will do that. I want to keep an eye on those seams. I don't want anything to roll. A rolled seam on flannel is really bulky and could break a needle and when you're long arm quilting. So I really want to avoid it. Now that we have this, where is this going to go? Easy peasy. This point, since this block is really dead center, when you line that point up with the line on the pinwheel, you'll be exactly where you should be. So let me pin that. Okay. Now let's look and see what we have. There's our corner. So that's how you do setting triangles, right? And you can always trim off your extra, extra bulk there. And you're always going to want to do that. 
So that's why the next row will come in this way and this way and this way until you continue all the way across. Then last but not least, probably the most uh, looked forward to is the applique. The elephant, Ellie the elephant. Let's bring that out. And we've put together a special layout diagram for you. This is just something extra in your kit so that you can see the full assembly, making it easier for you to put the elements together. I'm gonna to use an Applifuse mat, which allows me to pre-assemble things. So I don't have to move them onto the background one by one. I don't have a light box on here. I don't have enough room for a light box on set with me. If I had nothing but space, I'd absolutely grab one, makes it easier. If you don't have one, this would probably not be the moment to go out and run and grab one. I don't think there's that many pieces to justify that. But this is basically how the diagram works in conjunction with um, an Applifuse mat. We can see if we want to just pre-assemble, I think that's her ear over there. If we want to be able to pre-assemble certain parts of this, like her ears, I'm just going to put them on top of my Applifuse uh, mat. And I can see where I'm kind of just peeking where the pink goes. And we can iron that together. And I'll draw my heat back to maybe a medium heat or maybe a little bit hotter. I've noticed with flannel, because it's thicker, I do increase the heat just a little bit more than medium with flannel because, again, it's thicker. So we'll just warm these up, merge that together, let that cool, scoop this over. We can go do her other ear while that one's cooling. Again, putting this down. And here. And ironing that together. While that one's drying, let me just remove this. And now two pieces are one. Isn't that cool? And you, you know, this is just two pieces. Some applique projects have so many pieces. Just like the layering and what comes first and what comes next can be very difficult to understand. We numbered ours so you know that piece one goes down first, followed by piece, the, the ears, and then of course the face and the eyes. So let me just peel this off. If we want to put the bottom portion of our elephant. I should have started there. That is piece number one after all. We want to put that down first. And then have the body come next. Well, we wouldn't. We need to put our ears down now, don't we? The ears go behind. Then we put this on. Now, if I had my light box, I would turn the light on and I would see the diagram where that trunk was. I don't have that with me today for space limitations, not because I didn't want to have it. And I can see that's where my trunk is going to go. Let me make a little adjustment here with the ear. And again, if you don't have an Applifuse mat, you don't have a light box, don't worry. This is not the moment to go run out and buy those things. If they're handy, fantastic. If you're gonna get the kit and you wanna pick that up anyway, awesome. But don't think you can't do the project without that. There's just not enough applique here to have a reason to buy these elements. Now, if you're in love with applique and you plan to do a lot of it, yep, make that investment. I only invest in tools where I know I'm gonna be using them again and again and again. The eyes, we decided to do fabric, of course, not buttons, because we didn't want to have any choking hazards. Figuring out where our eyes go. 
again, a great opportunity to turn on a light box if I had one, but I can see they go about right there. That, that's cute. All right, iron that down. Once this all cools down, I'm gonna lift it up off the background and you're ready to apply this onto your project in your favorite spot. And of course, you're stitching that down with a thread set. So if you're a beginner and you've never, you've never done something like this, don't let, don't let your lack of experience slow you down. You know when a person, when a person gets a gift like this, no one's looking at your seam allowances. Nobody cares if your points aren't perfect in the center. You know what they cared about? You took the time to make something special for them and their baby, and that's all they're ever gonna remember. So get your kits, they're very limited, and subscribe if you haven't done that. Do that right now and let your friends know as well. We have so much coming up, so much content, and so much you can watch that's already been filmed. Um, and be sure to get on that newsletter as well. I'll see you soon on a future Shabby video.